So good afternoon everyone, this is John from Brandon Capital and currently we are focusing on a project called CEDA Network. And it's an honor to be the last speaker in this room and to talk about the present and the future of Web3 in China. So before we talk about Web3 in China, let's first talk about Web2 in China because you understand, because in China it's quite different case uh, than other places in the world. So, who is he? And what has he done? Actually, he is just a food delivery man in China, and he has drive more than 50,000 kilometers in one year. That's more than one round of the Earth's great circle. And on average, let's say, on average, it's about 150 kilometers per day to deliver, to deliver food. And is this happening in any place else in the world? You see there are great demands uh, in China for the food delivery. And then you can understand why Chinese uh, application has, has set, is so convenient and uh, robust. And then let's talk about WeChat, the instant messaging, the most famous, uh, famous instant uh, messaging application in China. And actually its main functionality involves the functional functionality of Facebook, uh, WhatsApp, and a kind of payment system that's, that's similar to a centralized uh, Libra. But that, that's not all. Uh, actually the Chinese version of like Uber, Uber Eats, uh, Yelp, Amazon, and Booking is also integrated into this platform. So user actually only need to install this one application in their cell phone and it's everyday life is done. So just give some numbers. The inter this is uh, the number in China and by the end of uh, 2018. And the internet user reached more than 800 million and among them almost all are uh, all of them are mobile internet uh, user, and uh, the mobile payment is rich more than around 600 million people. And we have another, uh, 5 million qualified software developers. That's a huge number. And what's more, China has en just ended up the uh, epoch of COVID to China. Uh, nowadays, like TikTok, it's already become the world top, uh, top application. And uh, in Germany, uh, here in Berlin, you may find some orange bikes and then the mobile. And that originate, I mean, that originated from China. And the dockless bike sharing system, if not originated from China, I think it's fully developed in China. So, we have a very com a convenient and user-friendly web to in China. So are we happy with the current state? Well, before talking about that, let's first briefly introduce you the current situation about crypto ecosystem in China. Well, according to Cambridge Center of Alternative Finance, uh, oh, among the global crypto asset industry, China plays the most important. Play, uh, China has the most top players, and uh, considering trading trading values of uh, Chinese-based exchange, that's also uh, uh, overwhelming the proportion of the whole volume. And if you consider the OTC market, this is still a large portion of OTC market from China. And remember, this number does not include the largest Chinese OTC, the Hobby OTC. And then, let's dive into mining industry. So first, China has more than 65% of total Bitcoin hash rate are contributed by Chinese mining pools, as you may well known, and uh, talking about Mingo uh, Mingo Green, the anonymous cryptocurrency, the number is larger. 
That's like more than 80%. So, why do we have this kind of boom? Okay, speculation may be a reason, but not all, I think. The popularity of Bitcoin and Ring may give us some hint. Like, actually, there is the first reason is that there is foreign currency regulation in China, and each person can not send abroad more than 50,000 US dollars per year. And with Bitcoin or like Green, people can send their money abroad freely. The second is about the consideration about the decreasing purchase power of the fiat currency. So people want to store their value in some decentralized way that is less affected by the government. You see, the Chinese have some Web3 needs. And actually, we have more needs. Because the Web3 system in China has many problems just as in the other parts of the world, or even more severe. Like take Baidu, the Chinese searching engine. Uh, the case is getting better and better, but it's kind of if you search something like the hospital, it may be it may give you a lot of just advertisement uh, hospital. And the number in 20 14 says that about 15 to 25 percent of Biden's revenue is just from medical advertising. Terrible. So many people suffer from this. Many people just trusted Biden's recommendation and went to the wrong place. And the next about the Android application market. Actually, in China, the Android application market is less in order. It's kind of, for example, if I want to learn some Asian, Chinese Asian poetry, and I have an Android phone, then it ends up with either I gave a lot of extra personal data that are necessary to the, to the application, or I cannot enjoy the poetry. But why a poetry application needs voice recording, needs your contacts, needs your GPS location. It's totally nonsense. But, but in China, we have to choose between one bad application and the worst one. Then, censorship. This is uh, a case that a university student uh, requires the university to disclose some details about a rape crime, crime of a former university professor 20 years ago. But instead, the university and mass media just blocked his words. So what happened? His words is uploaded to Ethereum blockchain. I'm, not, I'm here not to judge whether he is right or wrong, but I just want to say, in China, we Chinese already go we Chinese are already using some Web3 weapons to defend ourselves. Yeah, we need Web3 too, just like everyone else in this room. So, actually there are a bunch of uh, Chinese Web3 related projects, like the uh, Nervous, uh, Darwinian Protocol, ChainX, and uh, Huawei already get taught here in this summit. And there are some others, like, uh, like you see Iris Network, that's a kind of Chinese uh, cosmos, and you see a platform that's a, a privacy conserving focused uh, competition platform, and also uh, CDOP, that's our pro program. So, uh, I want to hear, hear, share some of our insights towards a potential prosperous Web3 in China. <coughs> First, 
and to turn application builders into dev builders. Actually, we Chinese, uh, in, according to experience of Web2, uh, and as a common knowledge in China, we Chinese are quite strong at building applications that meet real needs. So now we have Substrate and Cosmos SDK, these kind of very powerful tools. These tools enable us, I mean, enable engineers of the teams to focus more on the application logic rather than the infrastructure. So, I think we should empower people in China, the team in China, to build more dApps using these kind of tools to build dApp chains. Actually, if we have more try and error, error, if we have more diversity of innovation, we have more Quanti larger quantity of innovation, then there will be more possibility to remain some successful projects. And for us, uh, CDOT, we are building a Cosmos uh, hub like non self security hub uh, that can talk uh, IBC with. That chain that developed by either Cosmos SDK or Substrate, and the connection fee to uh, to C dot is something between the uh, a parallel thread or a, and a parallel chain slot of that that of the uh, token. So we do think that it's crucial to reduce the innovation cost of Chinese development team and also to give them more options. The second, uh, this is no need to say that like, we need more global connections. Like I think still nowadays the in China, the Western world, the, there is a huge information asymmetry. And we do need a lot of connection, a lot of communications between us to build uh, the whole prosperous community. And I'm glad to see that today here in this summit, there are more Chinese than yes, uh, last year. And I'm also glad to see more Chinese developers uh, on board to the Web3 projects like Ethereum and Pogo, and so on. Yeah, we are getting better and better. But this is just a starting point, I think. And what do you see that? Well, very simple. Just connecting, try to do more connections. We will connect to Polkadot, we will connect to Cosmos Network, and we will connect to the Chinese development team, we connect to the Western world, we connect everything we can. We just make more connections to enlarge the network effect. Then the network effect of the whole crypto, uh, of the ecosystem will be benefit. And uh, I fully encourage you to come to China and view China yourself and share with us some of your stories. And that's all. Thank you very much. So, any questions? Yes? Um, thanks for the insights. Uh, Thanks for the insights. Um, is there a reason why you're not building on a Chinese blockchain like NEO and have decided to go on um, a Substrate and Polkadot Cosmos type of thing? Okay, actually, NEO is a different thing because 
uh, if you just consider, I'm not com com about competition, but near it, something more like uh, Ethereum, and you build that, I mean, smart contract on top of that. But, but like Cosmos SDK and Substrate enable us to build that case. That's totally different. And uh, I think if you build that, I mean, smart contract that, you have many limitations. And like the speed and also the uh, very, I mean, not a lot of people know the language and so many problems. Uh, I don't think Chinese team are good at doing this. I mean, a bit more infrastructure things. But, but they are more good at to do so just a, a application logic. And if you give them a tool, like if you give them uh, for the front end, and if you give them React, they can, use a, they can make a bunch of websites, right? And like Substrate and Cosmos is like the React in the blockchain industry. Just give them a tool, and they they think about a lot of logic, and they they build the logic, and they try it, and try and error, and then yeah, I think that's important, more important. So a new era has already come. I think the time to build that change. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, then thanks.